Welcome along to another exciting step forward in the world of cosmology. So if you're feeling like you're up for a bit of a challenge, you can just see what you can figure out from what's on the page. I think most of you probably will need a few of the hints that I'm going to reveal underneath. And of course, once you've had a good go at this, I'll work it through for you. So this is what we know about a particular quasar. It's got a power magnitude of 12.7. It's red shifted by 0.158. In other words, the delta lambda over lambda is 0.158. What can we deduce from this? So if you're feeling really brave, off you go. We need a bit of a hint. Well, we should be able to get a speed from the Doppler, shouldn't we? And if we've got a speed by thinking about the expansion of the universe, we should get a distance. If we've got a distance um, and we've got um, an apparent magnitude, then we should be able to get an absolute magnitude. We should then be able to compare the brightness to the sun and then we should be able to um, find the power output. OK, so off you go. You go and sort that out. Good, you're back. Let's see how you did. So how are we going to go about doing working out the speed? Well, what we know is delta lambda over lambda is approximately equal to V over C. Now we're just going to have to pause here. Um, because I think there's some important things that are worth pointing out. We are really not, you couldn't really say that delta lambda um, is a lot less than lambda or, is, or V is going to be a lot less than C. It's going to be 15% of the speed of light. So you could argue this equation isn't valid. It's just that the, the other ones are more complicated. More bizarrely, you will definitely find quasars out there with a Z number greater than one. And your immediate reaction would be, that's not possible because how can something be moving away um, faster than the speed of light? And of course, I know people think that physicists make it up as they go along, but I think this is a good answer. Of course, we're not saying that this galaxy is moving through space relative to this galaxy at a speed greater than the speed of light. What we're saying is that we're adding space between these two at a rate of more than three times 10 to the eight meters of space added per second between these two objects, although the effect on the wave um, is similar. So yeah, let's carry on working out the speed. The speed is the speed of light times delta lambda over lambda, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 times 0 0.158. Surely even I can get this right on a calculator. Times gives um, 4.7 times 10 to the 7 um, meters per second. From that, we should be able to get a, a distance, shouldn't we? So Hubble's law um, is is that um, V is equal to HD. So um, the distance is um, V over H. We've got to be a bit careful because um, we've got to convert this into kilometers per second by dividing by 10 to the 3. We get 4.7 times 10 to the four divided by 65 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Okay, so you do 4.7x4. Four, four Why didn't I just put do 4.74? Because you always want to make sure what you put in your calculator is the same as the equation that's on the sheet in front of you. Uh, gives us 700, we're just going to round again, 720 mega parsecs okay so 7.2 times 10 to the 8 parsecs let's write that 7.2 times 10 to the 8 parsecs so we're now i'm going to have to go have a go at finding absolute magnitude so m minus m equals 5 log d over 10 we want the absolute magnitude so m is equal to uh, that's going to go that way, little m minus 5 log d 
1 over 10. So we get 12.7 minus 5 times the log to the base 10 of 7.2 times 10 to the 8th over 10. Um, for me, let's just might do that. It's one less step to put in the calculator. So... It's 12.7 minus, open bracket, 5 times log, and we have to put in the 7.2x7, close brackets. No, it didn't need to close the bracket. Minus... 26.5 now if you're a fan of these videos you'd already be thinking that's a seriously bright object isn't it because we saw that the peak magnitude of the type 1a supernova was between minus 19 and minus 20 this is therefore a good six or seven steps away from that each step being multiplied by 2.51 and in fact the people who first um, observed um, quasars um, really didn't believe the numbers that were in front of them. They, they couldn't, they, they thought they were beyond what was possible with physics. Um, so now we'll have to estimate the power output of the sun. So we've got to do, uh, remember that the um, apparent magnitude of the sun is 4.8. So it's 2.51. So the power output is 4 times 10 to the 26. Um, 2.51 to the power 4.8 plus 26.5. So 4x plus 26 times 2.51 to the power, open brackets, 4.8 plus 26.5. Close bracket equals we're talking 10 to the 39 watts okay this is a huge huge power output this is kind of like the hot the power output of an entire galaxy so there must be a few more things to know about these quasars they are quasars are the most distant object that we can observe in the universe they have these huge red red shifts and by implication, when we do the inverse square law using that equation, we find out that they are uh, quite staggeringly bright. They are radio sources. That's how um, they were initially discovered. Um, so we go back to when we were talking about the telescopes. People were pointing their um, telescopes, uh, radio telescopes, finding uh, objects, uh, giving out lots of radio energy, asking people to point their telescopes. And people were finding these points of light. This is short for quasi stellar object. It's not a big distributed thing like a galaxy. It's got size. It's just it was just a point. Um, and they did these calculations and find out how much energy they were giving out. The only possible explanation that science has come up for this for what's going on is we have a supermassive black hole, considerably bigger than the one um, in the big which we talked about before in the middle of our. Um, Milky Way. Now, obviously, the black hole bit, the event horizon, nothing can come in from outside. But what we imagine is this huge thing called an accretion disk. So there's stuff orbiting in a kind of spiral into the black hole. And as it spirals in, getting closer and closer, it gets closer it gets, the faster it's going. Every layer is rubbing past every other layer. We're converting gravitational potential energy into other forms of energy, particularly thermal energy. So we've got this huge, hot, spinning disk. Uh, the charges separate out because it's so hot. And that produces these enormous things called jets. OK. Um, and it's these jets that contain the uh, bright radio energy. So radio sources. Now, one of the weird things about... Um, quasars is there are no nearby quasars 
which initially kind of seems to break a basic principle of the universe. We imagine it to be roughly the same everywhere. We don't think that's the case. So what does it tell us if you only see them a very long, long way away? What it tells us is that we only see them a, a long time ago. We believe that there might be local quasars, but because everything's fallen in, um, they stop giving out energy and therefore we can't see them anymore. So quasars were a feature of the early universe and seem to be no longer part of the current universe. Okay, just one more to go. Hope you're sticking with it. Thank you very much.